Are you hungry? Me either. Let's talk about knives instead today. What is up you guys? My name is Jacob. This is Conscious Cooking and today we are not making anything except the difference in your life. So for a very long time in the household that I lived in, we had bad knives, bad cutting boards, and worst of all, bad habits. Because there's a lot of things about knives that people are either ignorant of or they're aware of and choose to ignore regardless. So I'm going to be breaking this down into really three segments. The first segment is going to be choosing your knife. The second segment is going to be using your knife. And the third segment is going to be caring for and storing your knife in general. But the first is going to be about choosing your knife. Now, when you choose a knife, I'm talking about like chef knives. I'm not talking about the knife that comes in your flatware set. I'm not talking about the steak knife that you get at a restaurant. I'm talking about actual knives that you use for cooking. The ones that you see me using in my videos. Now as far as knives are concerned, before I go into this, I do want to make an honorable mention for ceramic knives. Recently, and when I say recently, I mean like within the last probably three to six months, I've become a very big fan of ceramic knives. They're easy to maintain. They do not dull. And if they do, it's at an extremely low rate. And they're also... They just stay sharp. And that's really nice, especially when you put your knives through a lot of volume as opposed to a lot of precision because ceramic knives are usually a little bit thicker than metal knives because it's ceramic. If it was thinner, it would break. It's not as strong as metal. However, it keeps an edge longer. So I do want to give a special shout out to ceramic knives. Like I said, I've become a fan of them over the last three to six months and they're great knives for things like home use. If you're working in kitchens in restaurants, they're not necessarily going to be the best because they do have a certain bulk to them, I would say. They lack the same level of precision that you can get from metal knives simply because of the material that they're made from. Now, now that we've gotten that out of the way, choosing knives really doesn't need to be difficult. First and foremost, you want to look for forged rather than stamped knives. The reason being is that forged knives are going to last you much longer than a stamped knife will. And the difference is basically this. A stamped knife basically means you take a sheet of metal that's probably, let's say, a quarter of an inch thick, and using a laser cutter or a giant press, you punch out a knife-shaped piece of metal. Then you grind the edges until it's sharp, put on a handle, and it's ready to go. This makes for really cheap knives because there's not a lot of effort or really value involved in making it. They're usually just made out of regular stainless steel and they dull pretty quickly as well. My dog has decided to visit me. Do you want to be on YouTube? Do you want to be on YouTube? Hey, bud. So that's the thing about f stamped knives. They're very basic. You punch out a shape, you grind it, you put a handle on it, you're ready to go. It doesn't hold an edge very well because there's not much really there. There are no layers to it. There's no backbone to it. All of it is exactly the same material. There's no, there's no amount of differential within the knife itself. So all of it is just mediocre. And I don't like using that term because I would rather you have stamped knives than no knives. I would rather you have 
a mediocre knife than no knife. But then you get to forged knives, and they're just so much better. The way that forged knives are made, and this is just generally speaking, you have multiple different types of metal. A high carbon metal, a low carbon metal, um, a neutral alloy type of steel. I'm just listing off a few examples. A high chrome steel if you want something to be shinier. Um, high carbon steels make the knives harder, I believe, or maybe that's nickel. I'm not exactly sure. I don't really study that. What I do know is that the different densities and amount of heat that the knives can take, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but a forged knife has a bunch of different layers. And what you do is you take those layers and you stack them one onto another. Let's say you have four layers of four different types of metal. And you heat that up until the layers fuse to one another. And then you, what you do is you cut it in half and stack it back onto itself. And you repeat this process over and over and over and over again until hypothetically you have 512 layers of steel. You're probably thinking, well, wouldn't it snap apart? No, because the amount of heat that's used when making these knives fuses the steel together so it becomes one homogenous piece. This makes knives a lot stronger, and it makes them last a lot longer. The other part about this is that forged knives have much better edges, because you, you have more mass absorbing when you cut into something. This essentially means that your edge isn't the only thing that's taking a hit. Everything's taking a hit. The entire knife is taking a hit when you're using... A forged blade. When you're using a stamp blade, since everything's exactly the same, the blade is the only thing that's absorbing any of the damage. So the blade will dull very quickly. Granted, forged knives will dull as well. It's simply at a much slower rate than stamp knives. And forged knives dull a lot faster than ceramic knives. The list goes on and on. The big advantage of having a forged knife is longevity. That's the big thing about it. That's, if you have a really good forged knife, it will last you until your grandkids are using it. And it'll probably last through them also because they're pretty much indestructible. They almost never shatter. They almost never break. As long as you keep them sharp, Nothing's ever going to happen to them, and as long as you care for them properly, they're not going to rust or fall apart or end up in a dead body. Just as an example, I don't know. As for using the knives themselves, you want to make sure that you have a good cutting board. A good cutting board is going to be a knife's best friend. And also, above all of this, is knife skills. A good chef or a good cook is more valuable than any knife because let's say you buy a $3,000 chef's knife. If you don't know how to cook, it's not going to help you. It's not going to do anything for you, which is one of the reasons that I show you guys as many of the steps as I can when I'm making this show. I want you to get as much information as possible from me doing it. So there is going to be there are going to be more episodes like this. I'm not going to be cooking in every single episode. Sometimes it's going to be about knives. Sometimes it's going to be about specific kitchen tools. Sometimes it's going to be about a kitchen itself. There's a lot of stuff to talk about that a lot of people ignore when they write a recipe. For example, there are a lot of really famous chefs on things like TV where they <laughs> my favorite example this it was from uh, John Panette who is a deceased stand-up comedian he did one bit where he would say he was watching Martha Stewart and she and she would say everybody break out your chestnut roasting pan who has a chestnut roasting pan and that's one of the things that I truly admire about Alton Brown, who is my primary inspiration for what I do. 
he makes things simple and he makes it realistic everything that he has in his kitchen is something that either most people have or most people should have that's the big thing right right there if you don't have it and i have it in my kitchen you should probably have it because when i moved from florida to new orleans about a year and a half ago I was very meticulous about what I felt that we needed to keep for our kitchen and what we did not need to keep for our kitchen. And eventually, when I make enough money to move out of this house and have my own house, I'm going to be even more meticulous because it's going to be smaller because I'm not going to be making as much money as both of my parents combined when I first move out. So my kitchen is going to be even smaller. I need to be even more careful about what I do and don't have in my kitchen at any given time. So that's one of the things that people need to realize. I also don't like to use, generally speaking, ingredients that are difficult to find. The only example of that that I can think of is the sumac. Sumac, I couldn't find it. I had to order it online. You can get everything online. And guess what? Ordering it online is inexpensive and it's convenient. So I'm not going to fault you for doing that. But I'm not going to have you buy... And this is a Alton Brown-ism. It's something that he says all the time. I'm not going to have you buy a unitasker. Anything that I have you purchase or that you already have should be used in as many different ways as possible. Which is why I was hesitant about doing the Mediterranean turkey burgers. Because sumac, granted, it's a very versatile spice. However... It takes me a while to develop a recipe that's going to involve it because it is very culture specific. It's a very Mediterranean spice. I'm working on some stuff to use it again. However, it's going to take me some time because I don't want to pigeonhole myself into doing Mediterranean things until I can quote unquote justify purchasing sumac. Back to <coughs> where I went off track about five minutes ago. A good surface makes caring for your knife a lot easier. For a very long time in my household, we had glass cutting boards. And I know, that is a sin. It is a sin. You should not have glass cutting boards. Glass doles knives. Because glass is a crystalline structure. And crystals against metal, they don't go together. Glass is harder than metal because of how it's literally molecularly designed. So it will dull the crap out of your knife. Metal. You cannot cut on metal. Granite, stone, marble, anything like that. There are only two surfaces that you should ever cut on. That is plants, which I will explain in a minute and polys, and I'll explain that in a minute as well. Polys refer to plastics and composites because a lot of the times you'll see a board that looks like wood, but it feels like plastic. That's called composite because it's, it's plastic. That's what it is. It may happen to look like wood. Most of the cutting boards you see me use are just solid colors. They're about an inch thick, and they're just easy. They're very fast surfaces. They're easy to cut on. They don't absorb too much energy when you cut. They're not perfect, but they're good. Wood is also an amazing cutting board surface. The problem with wood is that it's porous because it's a plant. So you don't want to cut anything that you wouldn't eat raw on it. For example, you should not cut fish, meat, beef, pork, poultry. You should not be cutting that on wood because wood is porous. It'll soak that up, and yes, you can clean it, but it's a lot easier to just get a plastic cutting board, cut the raw meat on there, and then shove that thing in the dishwasher. Most poly cutting boards are dishwasher safe. Just... I have made this mistake before. Measure your dishwasher before you buy cutting boards. Because if your cutting board is too big for the dishwasher, you're going to have a pain trying to wash it. Because they're going to be big 
and it's a lot of surface. As for wood, you can also get bamboo cutting boards. They're nice. They are grass. Bamboo is grass. So I would only say cook or cut vegetables and fruits on there. Not really anything else. Not really, not really that great for anything else. But as I said, glass is horrendous for cutting things on because it dulls your knife. The reason that I had glass cutting boards growing up is because I grew up and to this day, I still live in a kosher household. And according to the laws of kashrut, glass is a non-porous substance, so you can cook meat on it, wash it, and then cook dairy on it, wash it, and then cook meat on it, and so on and so forth. Because it doesn't retain meatliness or dairiness. I don't know all the specifics. All I know is that it's horrible for your knife. Metal is also horrible for your knife. As is, you know, granite, stone, marble, anything like that. Don't cut on your countertop itself is basically what I'm saying. Most kitchens that I've seen have, like, a composite type countertop that's not the correct type of composite. It's usually, like, a lacquered composite that's similar to, like, a wall or... It's going to be, you know, some sort of stone. Granite marble, something like that. Don't cut on it. It's not good for your knife. As for caring for your knife itself, there are a few things that you need to have. First and foremost is something to store your knives in. Now, for me, since I've worked in kitchens, I have a knife bag. Or rather, I have a tool bag. I use a large tool bag to carry my knives. All of my knives have their own case, or sheath rather, something that you put the blade into so it doesn't cut through things when you're moving it around. My knives have their own cases. I put that into my tool bag, and that is my knife case. However, in my knife case, I have a few other things. I have a soft bristle brush, which is used to clean my knives, and I have a honing steel. Now, honing steel is the thing that people usually ignore when you buy a knife set. When you buy a knife set, it's got your knives and then a long piece of metal that's attached to it. That thing's actually going to be your best friend. I use it every time before I bring out one of my knives. What a honing steel does is imagine that this is the edge of your blade. And after you use it, it kind of slants over a little bit. Because it's not perfectly sharp anymore. What a honing steel does is it knocks the edge back into place so that your knife cuts better once again. Use this every time before you cook. Me personally, I probably do it every time before and after because I'm kind of OCD about my knives. The reason you want a soft bristled brush is because hard bristles will wear away at your knife more than a soft one will. The only other thing that I usually have in my knife bag at all times is something to... I'm trying to think of how to word this correctly. I don't want my knives knocking into each other over and over again in my bag. So I usually have like a roll of non-skid shelf liner and I just roll them up one time put the next knife roll it next knife roll it until it's a nice neat pack of my knives all rolled up in there the reason that I do this is because it prevents them from flying around inside the bag itself you don't need that it's just gonna make your knives a little bit it's gonna make them less likely to get damaged is basically the way that I would say that that's most of what I want to talk about regarding knives. Treat your knives well, and they will treat you well in return. I'm going to have different episodes where I cover things like cutting techniques specifically, and just general cooking techniques. There's a lot of other general non-recipe specific videos that I want to produce. However, this one is very important to me because I've had this argument with my parents probably 20 times before they finally gave in and let me have the right knives in our house. 
But that's going to be it. Thank you all so very much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. Share this video with your friends. Share the knowledge with everyone about knives. I'm very passionate about knives, in case you can't tell. That's going to be it for me. Thank you all once again for your support, and I will see you all next week. Goodbye.